we want to have an interface that tells us, well, how can we render a sprite and where can we render a sprite? In order to create something like that, we need to go into source and create a new file. And I call that render underscore interface. Obviously, we Pragma wants this. I quickly yoink the section here. Okay, we need constants, structs and functions. Firstly, we want to define how many transforms we have. And these are going to be the maximum amount of quads that we can draw to the screen for now. We're going to set this to a thousand. And then in order to define the transform, we actually want to introduce vector tools. And so at this point, I want you to go into the schnitzel lib. And then at the very bottom, I want you to create a section called math stuff. So for now, we are only going to create a vector tool for floats and an i vector tool for ints. Integer vector tool and float vector tool. Then we can switch back to the rendering interface and then we add in the i vector to atlas offset and sprite size into the transform. This will correspond to the offset in which to find the sprite and then how big the sprite is. And since we are talking about this right now, I want you to go ahead into source and create a new file called assets.h. And then we create our three sections, constants, structs and functions. Uh, and then in the struct section, we are going to create a sprite struct that holds an atlas offset and a sprite size. And then in addition to that, we create an enum that will hold the different type of sprites that we have. For example, the sprite dice that we have added is going to be there as well. And then in the assets functions, we are going to create a get sprite function that takes in a sprite ID and returns us a sprite. For every case, we define where to find and how big the sprite is and we set that on the sprite and then we return it at the bottom. We can then switch back to the rendering interface and define our first interface function. We call the function draw sprite that will take in a sprite ID and a position and you notice that the sprite ID is not known which means we have to add that as an include. In order for the GPU to know what it needs to draw, we need to have like some sort of array of transforms that we copy to the GPU so that the GPU knows, okay, this is how much I have to render and this is uh, the data that I need. And so in order to do that, I always create a struct called render data and inside the render data, we're just going to hold for now the amount of transforms that we are currently rendering. And then we create a new section called that renderer globals and inside we create the global of render data which means that now in the draw sprite function, we have access to it. First in the function, we get the sprite, then we define the transform and we just copy over the atlas offset and sprite size into the transform. And then we assign that to the array. For now, we're going to assume that the array will never be filled because in the future, we will actually implement an array uh, properly and then there will be no need for this check. Okay, now that we have the data in the array, the renderer has to use it. And for that, please go ahead and copy the transform and then put this inside the shader, the vertex shader. We can do a small section here called that structs and put this in here right now. And we need to make sure that the i vector tools are correct, which is an i vec2 in all lowercase letters. Okay, now we have to fill in the input section here. So we define a layout using the SCD430. This is why we are using the 4.3 version of OpenGL. We are binding it to the slot zero and we are using a storage buffer object called transforms or transform SBO. And this will hold an array of transforms. The size of the array is determined from the CPU and you, we will get to that in a second. And now you might see that we are actually not using any vertex attributes. We are just going to index into the transforms inside the shader. So inside of our shader, we are getting the correct transform by indexing into the array of transforms using the GL instance ID. And what that means, we will get to in a second, but basically we will batch together all of our transform calls since we only use one texture. And then all of these will be instance draw calls. So it draws the first instance, second, third and fourth. And these instance IDs will then, they act as indices into our array. So that means we can take the transform, the atlas offset, and then set the X to the left. We take the transform atlas offset on Y to the top. And then the right and bottom is X plus size on X and Y plus size on Y. And so this shouldn't change the texture coordinates right here, but we also have to change the top left 
uh, positionings because we want to position the sprite on the screen and we want to give it a size so in order to do that we switch back to the rendering interface and to the transform we are going to add two vector tools for position and size and then inside the draw sprite function we add in the size right here and then we add in the position and the size to the transform now we can switch back to the vertex shader and actually fill in the vertices right here. Okay, so I quickly copied this in. Basically what we're doing in the vertices now for the top left, we take the position, which means that every quad that we draw has the anchor point on the top left coordinate. If we draw and then we draw it down. And so we take that top left position and then go in Y direction to the bottom. And then for the top right, we go in X direction and do not move in Y. And so basically this is how we construct our vertices and nothing should change about the vertex index right here, vertex ID. Okay, the next step is to actually connect this from the GPU that was happening on the GPU. We have to connect this to the CPU. In the renderer, we add in another GLUint. That is the Transform SPO ID. That stands for Storage Buffer Object. Then we go into the GLInit function and we create a Transform Storage Buffer section right below the texture loading section. First, we generate a buffer, which is one buffer, and then we assign the result to the transform SPO ID. Then we bind the buffer base using the shader storage buffer. This is the type of the buffer. And then the zero means the binding index, which corresponds to the binding in the shader. And then we identify it using the transform SPO ID. And now we want to actually allocate the size for the buffer. And in order to do that, we need access to the transform and the maximum transforms, which means we need to include the rendering interface into our renderer. The next one is the data that we want to supply, which is the transforms array in the render data. And then we want to do it on dynamic draw. So basically what this does is this allocates us space. And then in the rendering function, we will use subdata, which basically means that we keep the allocation, but we will just overwrite the contents of it. And so that means we don't have to keep allocating new data on the GPU. And so then the only thing that needs to change in our GL render function is the GL draw arrays. And then this is where we call GL buffer subdata, which obviously identifies as a storage buffer. And we only copy however many transforms we are actually drawing. And then after that, we reset the count back to zero. And then in order to draw all of our quads, we call a GL draw arrays instance, which takes in the GL triangles as a handle. And then it asks us which is the first one, which is zero, however many triangles we draw in each draw call, which is six, of course. And then however many quads we are actually drawing, however many instances. And this is actually the instance ID right here, that is the index, which means we supply the transform count. And then after that, make sure that the reset for the next frame is below the draw call. So we actually draw the correct amount of quads. And then after that, clean up the geo draw errors at the bottom. And this should let us draw quads from let's say a game which is what we create now we go to source create a new file and call that game.cpp obviously we create our sections again and then inside the functions is our first function which is the void update underscore game and so for now we're not going to add in anything other than just a simple draw sprite function that takes in the sprite dice and i suppose we just position that on 100 100 and we draw it in a size of 100 by 100. in order to do that we need to include a couple of things we need to include the schnitzel lib and the assets and the rendering interface and it looks like in the rendering interface we also have to include the schnitzel lib and the same holds true for the assets Okay, now that all of the errors should be gone, what we currently do is we draw a sprite every time we update through the game. The last thing we have to do is connect that to the main.cpp file, which means we have to include the game in here. And I would like to include it right below input. And this goes back to the explanation at the very beginning of the build system. We are going to include C++ files in C++ files because we are only compiling a single C++ file. And this is called a unity build. What this means is that this unity build is the only thing that we compile, the only compilation unit. And uh, it will allow us to have a consistent compilation time across the entire development process of the game. And we will not have to deal with incremental build systems. And so, yeah, we put the game CPP file here. And then inside the update loop, before the rendering, we update the game. And it looks like I made a spelling mistake, lol. So put a D in here, update game. 
then it should be fine. Okay, so when we build, we get at least one warning, which means that sprite count is not handled in Switch. And I think this is a dumb warning, and I'm going to turn that off. So I take the W switch here, and let me go into our build.sh file. I'm going to get rid of that as well. So W, no dash, switch. Then if everything builds, position is not a member of strike transform. So the size is not a member of strike transform. That is correct. So I made a mistake of not updating the transform on the GPU. But this is actually a good error to get. And I wanted to get this error because in the next tutorial, we're going to add the transform into its own so-called header file for shaders. And this header file is going to be a merged header file that can be included in the game and in the shaders at the same time. And this is when these types of errors will no longer be happening and we will be able to change a single structure that then propagates the changes to both the shader and the game. But for now, in this tutorial, we have to go into the shader and then add the position and the size to it. So over here in the transform, we add in a vector to position and a vector to size. And then I get another error, which is an unexpected layout, which means that most likely I didn't supply a semicolon right here below the transform SPO. So make sure that that is put in as well. And other than that, we don't get any other error. Well, at least the program starts, but it doesn't draw us a triangle. If we inspect the render doc, we can see that there is a quad, but it is actually positioned in a weird way. And then if we look at the GL position right here, we see that it is 100 by 100 and then 100 to 200. That is because we didn't normalize these coordinates on the GPU. We have to do that. Essentially, what we need is the size of the screen. And so in order to do that, we need a uniform vector to screen size. So we are going to replace this GL position call right here with an index into the array. And then we take the position on Y and we invert that. Basically, that's because the Y coordinate in OpenGL is inverted. And this is what we are doing here. We are inverting it. And then we basically do the position divided by the screen size, which gives us a value between 0 and 1. And then we multiply that by 2, which gives us a value from 0 to 2. And then we minus 1 that, which will give us a normalized device coordinate between minus 1 and 1. And then we assign that to the GL position. Okay, now that we have normalized the position, obviously we have to supply the screen size. In order to copy the screen size to the GPU, we have to do that in the renderer. And so we switch over to that, and then below the transform storage buffer, we create a new section for uniforms and then the way this works is we have to assign another id which we will put into the gl context by calling gl get uniform location this takes in the program that we actually want to get the location from and the string name of the uniform so this screen size corresponds to this screen size name inside the shader the only thing left to do is to go into the gl context and creating another glu and screen size id now that we have the actual location, we need to copy the data over into it. And so that is what we do in the GL render loop. And so usually you would do that by calling GL uniform to float vector and then supplying the ID of the uniform that we want to copy the data to and then how much data we want to copy, like how many pointers. And then after that, we will supply the value. Since this is a float and our screen size is stored as an int, we need to create a vector2 float on the stack here and then copy from the stack to the GPU. The final result should look like this. We will definitely change the screen size on the input soon when we actually get to input again. Okay, now that we have built, let's see if we get a different result. And it looks like we do. On position 100, 100, we have a dice that is drawn. That means we can go into the game. So that means we can draw a bunch of quads like this if we want to. And this is everything for this tutorial. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. And if you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more like this. In the next tutorial, we're going to do a little bit of cleanup. And then after that, we will implement hot code reloading. I think I've promised that before as well. And now, but this is the time where we actually do it. And then we will be able to make changes to the game and see them while the game is running, which is awesome. So stick until then. Have a good one. Peace. That's everything for this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. An <laughs> no, I'm doing the outro now.